Okay, so we're not going to be writing any code in this video, but we are going to uh, just briefly note down the steps that we need to take in order to define uh, things like what the user is paying for and then go ahead and actually send them off to PayPal and actually how this works. So the first step within our application, number one, is going to be actually defining what the user is paying for. And this is going to just be in within a file. So the first thing is to define uh, API information. This covers everything to the actual um, item, the price, tax, shipping, all of that kind of stuff. There's a lot that we need to do here, but uh, with this PayPal SDK, it's pretty straightforward. So then what we do is we redirect to PayPal. And in the demo that you saw, uh, I clicked the button that sent me off to PayPal, and then it asked me to enter my information. So what then happens is, is we redirect back to our application. That's pretty straightforward. It comes back and it gives us a token which we can actually use to validate that the payment has been successful. If the user hits cancel or something like that, uh, you can specify an error redirect URL, which will redirect the user to maybe a page on your website saying transaction has been cancelled. Pretty straightforward. So then what we do is actually process the payment. So we, when the user enters, the, enters their details on the PayPal website, we're redirected back to our application. But at that point, they haven't actually been charged. We only charge them when they return and we actually validate the fact that they've entered their details, accepted, and then uh, that actually takes the money from their account. And that is pretty much it. So there's only really four steps to how this actually interacts with PayPal. And all of this is made really straightforward with the API, that uh, the SDK that we're going to be working with, which interacts with the RESTful API. It might sound a little bit more complicated than you might have thought, but in actual fact, this, this process is pretty straightforward. Now, in between some of these steps, what we're actually going to be doing is storing some data in the database. Obviously, when we process the payment, if that succeeds, we're going to update the details in the uh, database. So we're going to set member from zero to one. So apart from these sort of key steps, we're going to do a few other things as well. But you don't need to do these. We're just doing it as an example so we can see some kind of value come out of this. But that's pretty much it overall. So let's jump over to the next video where we're going to build up our database table.